The Western-backed Palestinian Authority held a funeral procession Monday for a U.S.-Turkish dual national activist who a witness says was shot and killed by Israeli forces while demonstrating against settlements in the occupied West Bank. Dozens of mourners including several leading PA officials attended the procession. Security forces carried the body of Asener Esge Eji which was draped in a Palestinian flag while a traditional black and white checkered scarf covered her face. The 26-year-old's body was then placed into the back of a Palestinian ambulance. Turkish Foreign Ministry spokesman Ankyu Kesali said Turkey was working on repatriating Aegis body for burial in the Aegean coastal town of Didim as per her family's wishes. U.S. officials did not respond to a request for comment. Jonathan Polak, an Israeli peace activist who participated in Friday's protest, said Israeli forces shot her on Friday in the city of Nablus while posing no threat. He added that the killing happened during a period of calm after clashes between soldiers and Palestinian protesters. Polak said he then saw two Israeli soldiers mount the roof of a nearby home, train a gun in the group's direction and fire, with one of the bullets striking A.G. in the head. The Israeli military said it was looking into reports that troops had killed a foreign national while firing at an instigator of violent activity in the area of the protest. The West Bank has seen a surge of violence since the Israel-Hamas war began in October, with increasing Israeli raids, attacks by Palestinian militants on Israelis, and attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians. Ukrainian military expert Dmitro Zmelo says that the Ukrainian armed forces' asymmetric actions have significantly adjusted the Russian army's plans for this year. The Russians will continue to try to squeeze everything out. They will try to build up the reserves of the center grouping of troops, which the invaders are concentrating in the Pokrovsk direction and which have hardly been pulled back to the Kursk region. Now, the Russians are not using armored vehicles, first of all, because there are fewer of them and the life of a Russian soldier or officer is much less valuable than a tank or some artillery unit. That is why the enemy keeps the equipment and what comes from the territory of the Russian Federation is of lower quality, to put it mildly, commented Dmitro Zmelo on Espresso TV. According to him, even the latest models of Russian equipment captured by Ukrainian defenders, such as the T-90M Proriv tanks, were equipped with a 1992 gun. This once again proves that the latest Russian technologies turn out to be soap bubbles. However, the Russians can move, but the zone of this movement has already narrowed, despite the fact that they continue to attack along the entire front line and seem to be trying to advance. The invaders will continue to accumulate reserves. I assume that they will not have enough forces in this offensive campaign to capture Pokrovsk. Will they be able to approach it? I think it is possible. Will they be able to break through Selidov somewhere? Because until the enemy resolves the issue of Selidov, they will not be able to move on Pokrovsk without receiving a flanking attack. Therefore, it is too early, as they say, to give up on Pokrovsk. The question here is whether the Russians will generate enough forces and reserves, the military expert said. Zmelo added that a few weeks ago, when the Russian forces began to pull back from the southern direction, Igor Strelkov-Girkin, 
a retired officer of the Russian Armed Forces, former FSB colonel, who is now in a Russian prison, panicked and said that this should not be done, otherwise Ukrainians would start cutting a corridor to the Azov Sea. Accordingly, the Russians are in a dilemma. Because they need to maintain the front line to protect themselves from Ukrainian attacks, and in the Kursk region, they need to somehow localize our bridgehead, and it is also important to continue the offensive on Pokrovsk to level the front line. Otherwise, the entire offensive summer campaign of the Russian army will be reduced to nothing, which means over 70,000 killed and wounded. The enemy is now facing a great dilemma. Therefore, our asymmetric actions, if not completely broken, have greatly adjusted in our favor all the enemy's plans for this year. Summarized, the co-founder and executive director of the Ukrainian Center for Security and Cooperation. The armed forces managed to stop the advance of Russian troops in the Pokrovsky direction. This was announced by the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Oleksandr Sirsky, in an interview with CNN. He acknowledged that Ukrainian defenses had been under tremendous pressure in the area around Pokrovsk for several weeks. But now the offensive of the aggressor has been stopped here. For the past six days, the enemy has not advanced a single meter in the Pokrovsky direction. In other words, our strategy is working, said Sirsky.